you so much. You know why we are taking that picture? One is that uh, I really, really love the background of this pulpit. Oh, eh. What ya baharini? Eh. Si hapo mbetuonyesha. Then number two is because I really think myself and Flo, we are really looking smart. <laughs> who, who is denying that? No denying. Sindio. Then number three is that she's my target. You see how smart she is? And your says, how <laughs> point you like I'm really, really honored, Flo, to really just be part of your preaching this morning because really it's you. It's you who is the guest. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And uh, we feel very honored that you are here. We have another few minutes just to look at, uh, continue with what Flo has just been speaking to us about. Flo calls me Mam Sarah, and I really feel nice because when you don't give birth to a daughter, and you find someone beautiful like her calling you mom. You declare her your own, so she's my daughter. And, and I really thank God, Flo. Uh, you really encourage me, and I thank God for you. I want us to stand. Look for three people. Joy will remain seated. Simama Tafuta, three people where you have not been, where you are not seated. Please just hold hands with three people. I'm giving you one minute. <laughs> okay. Uh, you have been given a question. Can you, in another one minute, say what you are? What are you in the body of Christ? Or in your group. Wewe ni mukono. Wewe ni macho. What do you think in your heart? On your marks, get ready, go. Please say. Sio mtu mmoja anaambia kila anasema yake kila mtu anasema yake Thank you so much ladies please take your seats Take your seats now You know, some assignments are so straightforward na malizia tu hapa, sindio? Hakuna aja kuibeba nyumbani. So you have known what you are, you are, you, who, who you are sitting next to, isn't it? Each one of us, in our hearts, we know what the Lord has called us to do. I just want to pick from where Flo has left. Uh, Flo has, had come, I think, and uh, Madam uh, Zipora, our chair, thank you so much for letting her come. Just to remind us, what was the purpose of this thing? What, what is it all about? Now that we have carried it on seven years, and I can see us carrying it on maybe another ten years. Um, you'll allow me just to take it a little bit back. Research, and this is not Kenyan research because we do not have a lot of our research that is published, so a lot of times we remain with American research. Research has it that one in every three people, as you are holding hands, three of you, one in every three persons is lonely. Lonely. They suffer from loneliness. This is internationally. And it's said that Brazil has the highest number of lonely people. It is also said from research that 79% of the law of Young adults, that is between age 18 and 22, are very lonely. That is the most age-wise. 
Why, when they're doing research on loneliness, they do not do uh, by class, is because loneliness cuts across all levels of people. Those ones who are struggling, those ones who have made it, those ones who are not sure, loneliness applies the same to all. And it is said that the age bracket, so loneliness, when they're doing research on that, normally they look at age, you know, different age groups, because normally the changes in our life ushers us, ushers us into different experiences. For example, those of us who are having children, those of us with children at home, the day you are last born gets to form one and goes to boarding. As a mother, what normally happens? You abruptly start feeling alone, isn't it? You don't know actually. You know like now Florence today, they arrived from Nairobi, she has come with her whole family, you call her and she's like, I'm just preparing a meal for them that I come. Now, you wake up one morning and there's nobody interested in your meal. You are just alone. If you are not careful, that can throw you into a state of loneliness. We'll be getting to know why I'm talking about this. And as such, it is said that loneliness is a result of lack of connection, separation, isolation, feeling abandoned, lack of sense of belonging. You just wake up, you wait for the day to end, but you are basically alone. And it's also good to note that no one, none of us, is immune from an attack of loneliness. And loneliness is actually a human default position. The things that Florence has been talking about, you make an effort. You make an effort to go and shine in your group. If you do not make an effort, you drop into a state of loneliness. Is the church affected? Yes. The church is even more affected than the world. We come to church, we are in a crowd. We come to church for worship, but we do not have fellowship. Nobody knows you. When church ends, you take off. You are struggling. You are enjoying, you are rejoicing, but you are rejoicing alone. When I was growing up, my mother, every time my mother slaughtered a big cock, she gave us a piece and told us, take to mama so and so. And by the way, we were nine in my mother's house, living alone, those who know the story of my father's house. But she was able to share half a piece, half of the chicken, with her co-wife, wakule, and the remaining one actually we ate and we were very happy there was chicken at home. Me and my two sons and their father, we just clear one chicken, the two of us. Nine of us, she shared. If you do not want to be lonely, you must make an effort. Otherwise, life itself drops you in. Actually, it is said that from Genesis chapter 3, verse 9 to 10, when Adam falls, when God comes and says, Adam, where are you? That was when loneliness began, separation from God. And that is why it's a default position. Yani, nobody cares for me. The way I'm just alone. Nobody knocks on my door. That is a default position. So when Flo is talking about the things that she's talking about, is an effort, is an intention, is a platform, is an opportunity for us to refuse. You know, a default position for the science students, a default position is the place where, you see, ukifuruta hivi rubber band, isn't it? Ukiachilia, what happens? It goes back. That's a default position. Where, when there is no pressure exerted, you get back to that place. And he said that because of sin, because of separation from God, that is the default position for all human beings. 
It's also said that um, being lonely is a choice you make. Why is it said like that? You remember the story of Cain and Abel? The Bible says in Genesis chapter 4 verse 9, Ab Cain telling God, am I my brother's keeper? And you know God had just asked him, Cain, where is Abel? And Abel says what? He didn't answer God. He asked God a question instead. And you know earlier on, God had told Cain, why are you downcast? In verse 6, why is your first downcast, Cain? God saw Cain slowly drifting away from the family and choosing a place of loneliness. It may not sound nice, but the truth is that lonely, a lonely position you choose yourself. You and your nataka kupa, kuka. In John chapter 13, verse 30, the Bible says that as soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went outside and you know what he was going to do? Judas made a choice to separate himself from the disciples. Hey, that doesn't sound like, like the way Flo, Flo was going. Sindio, sasa ina, ina tradisha wapi. We just want to firm up that thing of why these groups? Why the groups? Why are we making this effort? Because if we don't make it, if we don't make the effort, then we'll fall in a default position. I didn't check this, but I remember recently hearing, or, or you know how those WhatsApp clips that keep coming, of the fact that actually loneliness is becoming a major killer of people. Is competing with malaria. So it's a position that you choose yourself to want to be in. And yet, it's a position that is causing death. Is that bad? I just talked about the church. Is the church affected by loneliness? And I said yes. And even in the church, one in every three is likely to be lonely to some level, to some degree, because the degrees vary. One in every three is found to be at a place where they have needs in their lives and there's no one to meet them. One in every three is found to find themselves in a place where they hurt, they are hurting, and there's not one person to listen to them. One in every three in church is likely to be at a place where they have love to give and there's no one to receive it. Yalu mechinja kukuyako kama my mother and there's nobody to give a piece to. Maybe we just quickly look at what was God's intention? What was the original intention? Genesis chapter 6, chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock, all the wild animals, and over the creatures that move along the ground. The Lord said, let us. The Lord is communal. The Lord is using plural. He didn't say, I am going. The Lord desires that we live in communities. The Lord desires that we live in families. That is him. He says what? Let us. And then he goes there again and says, that they may. And you know, by the way, this time Eve had not been made yet. It was Adam alone in chapter three, in chapter one. That they, you can't rule over the earth alone. No matter how smart you are. Flo has just talked to us about the eye. 
I maybe I could just ask one question. Yesterday when you were coming from, you know, when you go to Nairobi, even if it's just for a week, you come to back to Eldoret and you keep on telling people how you are coming from Nairobi, you know? <laughs> hey, I hope, I hope at lunchtime, Angela says what was Nairobi, mutatuona kando, yeah? With, the, <laughs> with top layers, isn't it? Yesterday as we were coming, I noted on the road that there's a minibus, a Mercedes minibus, and I thought, oh, Mercedes have a minibus. Is that a good use of Mercedes? Mercedes also have the small ones, almost like that one of Glow. You, you guys have seen Glow's car, <laughs> almost like that one. Mercedes also have trucks. They actually also have trucks. They are called Victros or something like that. And they also have SUVs. In your opinion, for Mercedes, the truck, the bus, the SUVs, just for a family, the saloon, or the smaller one, which one is the most important? Mother Karugu, hey, I've been taught, I've been taught to call people out by name. <laughs> Marita, which one is the most important? All of them? All of them? Really? Yes. Lillian, why are you smiling at me? Why, why are all of them important? Oh, which one is the most important? Which one? <laughs> Lillian. You know when the Lord asked Cain, where is your brother? Cain did not reply. I'm asking you which one is the most important and you're giving me a different question. Okay, which one? Hey. And does she say? Okay, so that is more important than the minibus, isn't it? Teacher Anne, which of the four? There's the SUV for Lillian, that's the most important. I'm not saying for Lillian. I'm asking for the manufacturer of Mercedes. Which one is most, the most important one? I think my question wasn't very clear. Teacher Anne. <laughs> that one is a lure, and she doesn't say, Ish. I didn't say for you, I said for Mercedes. Uh, uh, on, the, on this side, which one is most important? All of them, isn't it? You know, for the manufacturer, for Lillian, it is ML. Uh, uh, there was something else before SU. Okay, so, and for teacher Anne, is the saloon. Maybe if I was uh, actually carrying goods from Mombasa to Nairobi, I mean to Kampala, it would be the truck. If I want to do maybe transporting tourists or something, it might be the bus. So the importance of these vehicles for Mercedes depends on the purpose for which it was made. So that means all of them are good. So that means... In that group, whether you are the SUV, whether you are the ML, or whether you are the truck, it depends for what purpose you are made. For as long as you are achieving your purpose, then to the creator, you're good. You're in a to? In a tosha. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, the Lord God said, it's not good for man to be alone and I'll make a helper suitable for him. So, God's intention is that we should not be alone. That is not God. Being alone is not of God. In the New Testament, 55 times in the New Testament, the Bible talks about one anotherness. 55 times. Bear with one another. Honor one another. Forgive one another. Do good to one another. 
pray for one another, build for one another, be devoted to each other. 55 times the writers of the New Testament refer us or encourages us to live for one another. So it's not me. You know, today's, today's society wants us to think that when you are alone, it is swag. It is not swag. That is a lie from the enemy. That because I don't know my neighbors, then I am making it. No. That is not from the Lord. That me, I attend church at Srikwa Pentecostal Fellowship Mission Center. When tea is being served, I walk out of the church compound. That is not it. It's not for me. What about if it is for Ruth? Ruth came to church hoping that she'll just find one person to talk to. And when church ends, we all walk out. Her child has just passed her exams. She's looking for someone to share joy with. And there's no one to share joy with. Because the world is deceiving us. That I can do church online. I'm one person who got very, very unhappy, by the way, when banks decided that if you go inside the bank, they'll, you'll pay more than if you get money from the ATM. You know, when you are queuing in the bank behind someone, you will ask them, oh, Sasa, you know, you can begin a story. Then now they decide that we, then to make it worse, now we even get it from the comfort of, of our homes. There's no comfort. The enemy is robbing godliness from us. The other day, I wanted to buy something from the supermarket. So I tell one of my sons, please just, the supermarket is just here. Walk there and bring it. And he says, why, why are you still going to the supermarket? You don't have the app for Kafo. And I'm like, so you, 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 what do you mean? See, so okay, let's list the things you want. Them, as long as they are above a thousand, they'll deliver for you right here. That is not swag. It's a lie from the enemy. Do you know those young people standing in the supermarket are waiting for me to pass there and greet them? Yes. Now I want things to be brought home. Church, there are some things we'll flow with, but they are not necessarily God's intention for us. I am lonely. I've been sitting in the house alone. It's a Saturday. I've not come to Eldoret. Let me go to the supermarket and see other people and chat up a little bit with the guy at the counter and greet the watchman and come back home. I've met somebody happy for the day. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14, the verse that uh, is our theme verse, Maybe I could just read it. I could just read our theme verse again. 12 verse 14 of First Corinthians says, maybe I start from 12. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all it is parts from one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all Baptized by one, let me just go to 14, sorry, verse 14 says, um, even so the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Just like the Ephesians verse that, 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 that Flo led us to. That is God's intention. And you know, earlier on he had just been talking about the spiritual gifts in the church, all of us having different spiritual gifts. So moving away from loneliness, how do we then, what are some of the practical things that we can do to run away from loneliness? Not too long ago, I was listening to Pastor Jesse Mwai. Pastor Jesse Mwai is a pastor of Nairobi Pentecost, of Sitam. Christ is the answer ministries. And he says, there was this brother who was a very active member of church. You know the kind of person who, when a pastor wants something to be done, he will quickly call him and he'll respond. 
And on this particular day, his brother calls and says, Pastor, do you have some time? We talk. And Pastor had a full program for the day and for the week. He said, can we make it next week? The following day, someone calls Pastor and asks him, have you heard what happened to Brother so-and-so? And Pastor is like, what? I know we talked yesterday. We are to meet next week. And he's told he has been found in the house having hanged himself. This is not a story. This is real. Nasio Yazamani, this is recent. An active church member. And what pastor was saying when he was sharing that story, he was saying, was I one minute late? Would my responding to his phone call have made a difference? And the question is, how many phone calls are we postponing? Church. Ladies, how many of us in this, and this one we shall cut up our hands so that uh, Madam Zipora, our chair, can see our hands, natuaibishe sheta, shetani. How many of us have not attended any of the team programs? Your team, Lois, Hannah, whatever. You've not had any engagement since the year began. Mine is up, Yani, for real. Umeona Nyuma? Thank you so much, team, for being honest. We have something that we can do. The phone calls from our teams, the cry, the desire from our team members. You know, this one, we found ourselves in it. But as she said, we are bound by one thing, the love of Christ. That is the center that holds us together. So we become a brother and a, a brother, a sister. We have, this is August, we are going to September. We have not had one single activity to cause us to meet. In my group, I don't know whether Pastor, Jen, uh, J Pastor Bosires, uh, Jen is in the room. She's in my group. The other day she just told us, hey, let's just meet and do nothing. <laughs> you know, women like to do nothing. And if you don't know what doing nothing means, call Lillian into your team. <laughs> she will be so busy moving up and down and making sure you are active and engaged until the day ends. You just laugh. Just laugh. If you do not have anything to eat, make popcorns and eat popcorns. Ladies, look for each other. You have the privilege of being in one church. You have the privilege of being in a group that is identified by color and by name. Please look for each other and do nothing. You know, this particular group is not an economic empowerment group. No, we are not meeting to discuss how we are going to buy land. Discuss that one with your other groups. This one we are just discussing how to love each other. We just want to catch up. How are you doing? Hey, habari ya masiku? Na umeongeza weight. Ish, you know, talk those kind of things. But you watch out who you are telling. If you tell me nimeongeza weight in Takasirika. <laughs> tell me. Until, until you are really cutting. Yeah? By the way, it is said that small groups are the fabric of any church that wants to grow. A church without, a small, group, without small groups will forever struggle. Why? Because in the big congregation like we are gathered here, we only come for, fellowship, for, for worship. We come to worship the Lord together. But do you know in this group, I can't tell you why I was crying last night up to midnight. I can't. I need a smaller group to pour my heart out to. So why small groups in church? Number one, and I'm finishing on that, is to provide personal care. Why should we have small groups in church? Number one is to provide personal care. In the small groups, we have quality fellowship. People will wait for you. Even if you don't want to speak, They'll slowly, they'll keep on probing. Uh, uh, Jane, why are you not talking? Uh, Jane, 
they'll keep asking you questions until they touch on the topic that you want to talk about. The small groups provide support and friendship. Number two, small groups are flexible. You are not fixed like Sunday service at 8.30. If you, you are not available to this, this week, you can actually meet next week. But just purpose to meet. Small groups also provide an opportunity for spiritual growth. Small groups give us an opportunity to ask questions. Do you guys remember this parable? Sorry to call you guys. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ladies, do you remember this parable where Jesus was talking about the shrewd, the shrewd manager? The one who was uh, uh, calling people and I would call Lisa, you can a thousand. And I can be a thousand. And I can be a thousand. And I can be a thousand. that man. Have you ever understood why that scripture is in the Bible? Why, why is the Lord? Why was that one also written? Because we are not being encouraged to steal from our employers, are we? But it's there. Do you know in the small group you can make that your point of discussion for a whole day? You can't do that in church. Number four, small groups provide a place of accountability. When I was in college, one of the things that was most, most difficult for us, especially the girls, was being seen near an unbelieving boy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> anything else but not that one. How? If brothers saw you standing next to a boy who is not born again, where we shout at night service, accountability. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 12, verse 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. There are some things we drift into. There are seasons of our lives that look like they will not leave you alive. Have you ever gone through those ones? There are seasons of our lives, they come and they really come. Zinakuja plus the grandchildren and the grand, you know, daughters and the grandmothers. And they look like this season has faced you to clear you. And without an accountability group, without a group to share your heart with, it's easy to be swept away. We need to be in a small group. And by the way, I didn't say this at the start. I should have said this. That it really doesn't have to be Tim Lois or Tim, you know, the ladies group. Let's, these ones we've been given, let's do it for the sake of our sister. But you can also be in as many small groups as you can. Small groups of your sisters, your family, really born, you know. Create a relationship. And you deliberately look out for each other. Small groups of Bible study in the church. Small groups of uh, former classmates. You know, because you are born again, that doesn't mean that you cannot relate with the guy you are with in Form 1. Maybe this lady needs you most, more than anything else, or you need them, actually. So let's be deliberate in being forming small groups. And that when you are in a small groups, be deliberate in ensuring that it survives. Don't let it. You know, I'm in one small group. And it's in that small group that I learned simple things like when you are introducing yourself, you don't say things like, my names are. You know that when you are not taught in school? <laughs> majina, majina zangu. Nijinalako, you know, Hakuna Majina Zangu is one name. You know, I learned that one from a small group. It's in a small group that I learned that when you are ironing a lady's top jacket, you do not put a line here. No, no, your line in a tokangapa. That's not for women. 
I learned that from a small group. It's only men who work with a line on the shirts. A woman's sleeve should be round. Hey, you are learning something that I also learned. <laughs> Do you know it is in a small group that I learned that when you are pouring tea in a flask, you actually can buy a funnel and put on top of the flask and put the sieve. Me, me, I used to, I used to put, you see, you see the, the, the person who, who thinks she taught me how she's responding. See, could you, uh, <laughs> because me, I knew that chai unamaka kwa jack. Alafu tuwe kwa jack, upeleka wapi? What is happening to your tea in the meantime? Hmm. You need a small group, those of you who are pouring tea. <laughs> you know, in, in a small group, you learn things that you do not just pick on the road. Because you trust each other, you love one another. Do you know the one that I found most interesting? And I know you'll also found it, find it interesting. This member of a small group finds me and says, Esh, you look so smart. Like in your bust. You bust in a catch a camera and guka e. You know? Hey, at your age, your bust should be standing at. Uh, 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 at uh, <laughs> you know, as a woman, you have a very beautiful dress. Like in a bust in a car, come on, on a kunyonesha. The bust is supposed to be standing sasita. How do you achieve that one? <laughs> and you know what I was told? And I'll tell you. Go and see Jen. Jen. Jen is attends church at, Srikwa, at Mission Center. She's also called Mama Lydia. Go and see Mama Lydia. She'll sort you, Mama Tusu. Mama Tusu will sort you out. And I'm telling you, Mama, to so sorted me out. <laughs> 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 and Just want to see to know Mama to so see me after that. <laughs> I'll give you her mobile number. And small groups also give us an opportunity for outreach. As a church, the main reason why we are together, we are responding to the Great Commission. And in the Great Commission, we do outreach. Do you know when I go to my home with Ruth? Recently, I lost my dad, and uh, not really recent. Now it's no longer recent. Ruth and a few of her friends just arrived a day before. Wakanza kutemba, yoboma waijue. Waijue all the corners, you know? My brothers, when I would listen to, oh, your friends have actually come to spend. I'm like, yes. By morning, they were in charge. All my sister-in-laws now know them. So I could pick up and I say, chakula imeisha. You know they are relating like now? And that gave me an opportunity not to disturb myself because I knew there was someone on the ground. You can only get that from a small group, ladies. And you can only get that if you're also investing in it. Outreach. Do you know after the funeral, my siblings were asking me, who are those people? Who are those ladies? They actually can just take their time to come and I tell them it's because we are Christians. The love of Christ. It will be easier for me to preach to your brother. Because one of you has to ask me one or two. But me is not going to ask me. So it's easy. There could be a place you are struggling with. You really want to do outreach to that corner of the village. Even here in town. Maybe in your estate. By yourself, you are struggling. But when you are in a small group, you pair up and you go. So quickly, sorry, I am going to say the second last quickly. 
Characteristics of a small group. What is, what is it that should be in a small group to bind us together? There has to be humility. Small groups are not class groups. They are not places to come and show off. They are places where we all respect each other for who we are. And we can see that in Philippians chapter 2 verse 3. That we have the mind of Christ where no one is superior to the other. And we all look up to each other. That we have the mind of Christ where no one is superior to the other. And we all look up to each other. Have you seen during weddings, when you are having a wedding, you are having a Laura show, and you want someone to create happiness? Imagine if Gloria Kakudi is in your group. So you are sorted. <laughs> because she will laugh and cause others to laugh. You know me, I grew up in an environment where laughter was controlled. If my dad had you laughing from the other room, because that means you are not, how? How? You know? And then I come around, a very groomed girl brought up by a very serious father, and I stumble into Gloria, and I realize, oh my goodness, you mean people can actually laugh and still be, <laughs> and still be serious people? Do you know those people who can you let, you know that thing of, I never managed to do it, because I was never part of the extracurriculum activities in school. Me, I was a serious girl, in the case my father as scared. Even my, you know, when my sons will be wedding, I know there's someone who is going to make that noise because I want it. I really like it, but I can't do it. Characteristics of a small group is that we must have humility, appreciating that all of us must look up to each other. Each one of us contributing something different. Number two, embrace each other. Ignore your preferences. If I'm noisy and you are not, ignore Kidogo. Gladly associate with each other and readily invite each other as we see in Romans 14, 3. Number two is that a good small group, we should embrace, embrace one another. Just love each other the way we are. A small group is not a place for you to come and teach us manners. No. Because, as I've told you, my idea of manners was that a good girl must laugh with control. You only put a smile and laugh kidogo. But I realized that Gloria's laughter relieves the heart. Even when you see her on a photo laughing, you start laughing. Glo, I'm not exaggerating. All this time, I've never known that lady in yellow is you until I put on my specs. Number three is that good small groups, we should listen to each other. In small groups, if I may quote somebody who I don't even remember who it was, that we break our jars of time, of gifts, of money, and of homes. In small groups, we allow others to reach you. And please don't come to a small group on phone. Keep away your smartphone. After all, the things you are checking are not even proved. Be available to listen. If I have not found anybody to listen to me in my home, I'm having an idea. I'm dying with it. And before I reach the second sentence, Mr. Wepohulu has already shot it down. I have not found anybody in my office to listen to me. 
Let me find that in Tim Lois. Listen to me. Actually, maybe you really need to listen to me properly so that you stop me from falling into the ditch because I'm having this conviction that this is how I'm going to become a millionaire in 30 days. Listen to one another. And we can see that in Galatians 6 too. But uh, then the finally, small groups give each other grace. The Lord's grace. That in small groups we forgive one another. When you become close in a group, you will hurt each other. You wake up, na mmoja wenu wameamua hataki kumuongelesha. Hata hujuni nini. Please don't dismiss them. Let's give each other grace in the small group. And the one I just want to finish with because we are ladies is that small groups are held together. The glue that holds small groups together is trust. I must know that what I'm telling you is going to remain with you, no matter how funny it was. Please don't carry the stories of the small group to the other small group. Not too long ago, a colleague was telling me about a, sto a story of one of our colleagues, a lady who was very senior in, uh, in, in the organization and uh, very powerful. A woman who, if she met you like this and said, tomorrow don't come back to work, you don't need to wait for the letter. Or if she said you have been promoted, you'll be promoted the following day. This lady in her retirement, she falls sick. She gets uh, sick, she goes to India for treatment, and she comes back. And you know, all of us know her as a woman who was very powerful, very strong. After I went to Nairobi and I sit next to one of my other colleagues in the office. And she tells me, by the way, do you know when we used to call this lady mom, mama? Do you know when she was in her last days, she called me. And when I went to her hospital bed, she told me, I want you to do for me just one thing. I just want someone to love me. I'm not looking for medical support. I'm not asking you to raise a WhatsApp group. But I just want someone to love me. And this girl, for three months, every day, she just went to sit at the bedside of this lady. That is what small groups are supposed to prepare and do for us. Not that you are going to fall sick and require that, but that actually a time comes in life and all the time. Not a time comes. All the time we must remember the things for which we run after. Yesterday I was reading Proverbs 23. And Proverbs 23, I can't even remember that it was first, verse 4 or 5. It says, do not put too much energy in looking for wealth because it will catch, it will catch what? Uh, wings and fly away. And I told myself, oh my goodness. Ha, this one's actually catch wings and fly. The thing that will remain with me is the relationship I make with Betty. That one lasts. You know that thing when people tell you, oh, you are so busy. I knew you are so busy, you, you didn't pick my call. And we celebrate that. Apana, yo ni akulia. I can't be too busy to pick your call. I'll have missed it. I'll have turned it round. I must have time for my sister. Just for the leaders in the room, how do you lead a small group? Sometimes you call, like today. The ladies committee call us for this meeting. And at 10 o'clock, 10.30, 10.50 is when the speaker was arriving. Leading a small group. One of the things that you must be very careful about is that remember that you are doing it for the Lord. So whether they turn up or not, keep doing it. Just don't make too much tea. Just make enough because... When they come, you can put water in the kettle. Alafu, amawaja tu magic chemka. Please don't give up 
calling the small group meetings because members are not responding. That is not easy. But because you know what the end is, what the outcome is, please keep doing it as a leader. And pray for your members, pray for the individuals by name. I was very impressed, Flo, that you can remember all your group members by name. Please pray for your individuals, your group members, because you don't know what they are going through. Be real and be easy to be reached. Usikuwe leader mwenye, ayani watu wanakuangalia tu wanashanga. In Rwanda, she was even met the leader. Uyu, sasa unamfikia aje. Relate, be easy to relate with as a group leader. Reach out to members and encourage them. Send them some texts. Let them feel they belong. It is costly, but remember it's outreach. Manage the extroverts and encourage the introverts. You know, there are those ones who can say everything. All the stories and examples are on the one Shut those ones down. That is the role of the leader. And purpose to reproduce yourself. Create other leaders from the small, your small group. And finally, as a leader of a small group, please create a brand. Create a brand. Flo has talked to us. I'm hoping that by that, when we go away from here, we shall leave a brand with a brand. Who are we? Who is Lois? Who is Anne? What is it that this group needs to be called by? I don't know how to do this. I'm not that charismatic. But there are some people who are very charismatic to light fires. I wish you were in that place where when I meet Betty on the roads of Sirico Pentecostal Fellowship Central or wherever, I introduce myself by my brand. I'm Lois. And this week, I was busy making sure that Timothy is reached with the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Anne. I don't know which Anne was, uh, you referred to. The one who was praying, Hannah. Hannah, the mother of uh, Samuel. Yes. That is when I meet Ruth, I can say, I'm Hannah. You know, I've just come from the temple. Please hold my hand with me because even the priest Eli could not interpret that which is paining me. Or I'm the mother of Samuel. Whichever, you know, I wish we could just find a way in which we start defining ourselves by our brand. You have seen how your organizations, you know, some time back I wanted to wash a camera, a, a film, a, who, a negative. Who knows a negative of a picture? <laughs> Please, if you know a negative, just... Eh? <laughs> really? Bet you know a negative. <laughs> so, <laughs> you have some. Yes. 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 So I wanted to, to go and wash. My, my uncle sent me his mother's negative. Anataka ni mtengenezee picha kubwa. So nika answer kutafuta Fuji. You remember there used to be a company called Fuji. How are you to identify Fuji? By what color? Green. And Kodak? Yellow orange. Do you know I... Went round. I remember there used to be a Fuji on Gar in Gara. I Nika Peter. The all the green you see now is who? That's a brand. That is a strong brand. May we develop brands for our groups, ladies, so that the next time flow comes around, we are not just wearing color. We are not just requiring Angela to keep on sending text. Mukumbuka kuva t-shirts that we are actually known by that brand. Being a member of a small group, that as a member, I think I've already said this, I just want to rush over, that we think of the needs of others and not us. You are in a small group for the other person, not for you. So if you don't feel like going, go because the other person needs to have you there. 
remember it is for your good as it is for the other and uh, I was listening, I, I actually read, I, I occasionally I pick some stories. This week I was reading a story of a, a Jew who was in the Holocaust. And you know, in the, during the Holocaust, the Jews used to be put in a, um, in, a, in a lorry and they're transferred from one camp to another. And this particular man says, as it was a very cold night and as he sat in that lorry, next to him there was an elderly person who was really struggling with the chill of the night because the night was freezing cold. So he decided he's going to do something. And he grabbed this old man and began rubbing himself on the other one. You know, anaskua miguyake, on this man, his hands, anaskua mikono, anaskua, you know, using any part of the body that can move to keep generating heat for the other person. When morning came, when the first ray of sunlight came, he looked around and everybody, everybody on the lorry had died. They had all frozen to death except the two of them. He was doing it for the other but he gained as well. As you generate heat for your sister, you too will survive. You choose to give your, keep your heat to yourself, you risk dying from frostbite. That is how serious it is, ladies. Be intentional as a member of the group. Be available for social events for group members. Please, let me not call for my child's graduation and my team is not there. Make it deliberate. Be available for the other person. There's nothing as nice as when you are with your family members and you are introducing your group. You know, it really feels very nice. Create friendship by just being around each other, laugh, cry, and do everything together that you can do. Call others out to volunteer opportunities and create your own social network. You know, people call it these days social capital. Capital, you know, is something that you use for investment, isn't it? And you can have financial capital, but if you do not have social capital, you risk death. And then you leave your financial capital for the others to consume. Please create networks. Create every opportunity to have and you know it is you to do it. There are some things I can't do for you. You have to do it for yourself. Even the pastor can't do for you. In conclusion, as we go for lunch, we are going to take our lunch break. And I want to request that we sit. And I'm requesting this, Madam Zipora, because mini metafta what ya lois waoni. Sasa nitakana nani? We were told to carry something to eat. Please don't go away during lunch break. We want to come back and just hold hands and pray together.